What's happening, YouTube? Cowboy here, and welcome back to another Heroes of the Storm Strategy Showcase. And today, we are taking a look at the fallen Nerubian King, Anubarak. Now, Anubarak is a melee warrior, and what he lacks in his tankiness for being a warrior, he makes up by bringing tons of CC and mobility to the team. So to take a look at our hero info, first up we have Impale. Shoot a line of spikes that damages and stuns enemies. Now in my opinion, this is probably one of the better CC options in the entire game right now. It shoots out a long line of spikes, and with a little bit of practice, you can effectively stun two to three members of the enemy team almost consistently in every team fight. Uh, because there is a little bit of travel time on the spikes, especially the spikes towards the end of the line, it does take a good amount of practice to get good with your skill sotch on it, but once you do, Impale is amazing in team fights for locking down your opponents. Moving on from there, we have Hardened Carapace, and this is really your only tanky option as a noob rock, whereas a lot of other warriors have things to, to really help their sustainability. You know, we have Second Wind on Muradin, Stitches by default has his Devour, and then a, a ton of regeneration, you know, amplified healing almost all around. This is all we really have with a noob rock. So every time you use Hardened Carapace, you get a shield on demand. It lasts for three seconds, and with smart usage, you can use it to mitigate out quite a bit of damage. Moving on from there, we have Burrow Charge, perhaps one of the best mobility moves in the game. Burrow underground and charge in a direction. And Burrow Charge is a really awesome ability because you can initiate on the enemy team, you can use it to disengage and get to safety, and on top of that, it allows you to go through otherwise impassable terrain. So similar to how we were playing Felstad and we were able to dive over walls, you can use Burrow Charge in the same manner to both initiate on enemies when they're not expecting it, or escape very bad situations with little no risk of the enemy catching up to you. Moving on from there, we have Scarab Host. Spawn a beetle whenever an ability is cast. Relatively simple, you just keep spawning little beetles as you use your abilities. You can also do uh, a couple talents that will facilitate this by quite a bit and effectively make an entire beetle-based build with a new Barak. But the beetles are nice, especially early on, because as you're using your abilities in the lane, if you're being aggressive, these beetles are getting up front, and they're effectively just soaking up ammo from those towers. Moving on to heroic abilities, two choices here, one I consider vastly superior, and that one being Locust Swarm. Spawn a swarm of locusts that damage enemies and heal you. So this is an amazing ultimate ability. When it goes up, locusts do 100 damage per second to enemies nearby you, and you're also being healed for part of that damage, which gives Anubarak some very much needed healing to help sustain him, because as I mentioned, he's not the tankiest out of the warriors available. Uh, our other choice, Web Blast, isn't a bad ability, but I find you need a very well coordinated team to pull this one off effectively. What you do is you basically wrap up an enemy in a web, and when you use it, you're effectively shutting them down for 8 seconds. Of course, the web can be attacked by enemies on the other team, but with a coordinated team, this is a great way to isolate that one hero out and remove him from the fight while you clean up the other ones. For the frozen throne. So, let's jump into a match, show you what he's all about. Uh, I obviously picked him up after Murky, and I gotta say, I really do like him a lot. He's a ton of fun to play. Um, you know, between your burrow charge and your impale, he... He feels like a really dynamic warrior, you know, he's, he jumps into the fight and then he's stunning people and then you're popping your shield when damage is incoming and he kind of feels like Nyx Assassin a little bit. Um, obviously you don't have the burrow, but I mean between the, you know, putting up your shield and getting the stun off, he kind of has that, that nice upfront initiator. So think of like Nyx Assassin if he was meant to be tanky. But either way, I'm hoping for a good game with him. Uh, I've been messing around with a couple different builds from Anubarak. I tried a, a full Scarab build. And it's interesting, because not a lot of warriors have strong siege potential, and a new Barak actually, you can build him to be like basically just a pure siege character. You know, you can get it to where your, um, your beetles spawn periodically every 8 seconds, you can make it so the beetles get stronger as they continue to attack. A lot of different options, but all in all I feel that he benefits more from a teamfight heavy build. So for our first talent here, if you were going to go a Scarab build, of course Assault Scarab would be the trait you'd want to pick. Um, personally, I like Regeneration Master on him. As I mentioned, his, he, the biggest thing he lacks is that sustain that a lot of warriors have. And Regeneration Master helps that up a lot. Uh, moving on from there, Extended Spikes, also a really, really good choice here. Getting an extra 25% range on your stun can really help to catch those enemy heroes as they're running. Persistent Carapace, not really a fan of it. Because, I mean, the shield right now, you know, it's only 112 points. So we're looking at slightly less than, uh, or a little bit over 10%. And, you know, all in all, I feel that it's, you know, when you, if you get smart about usage and you put it up at just the right time, you're not going to really need that extra duration on it. Get wombo. That wasn't a wombo, I don't know what I'm saying. But we did stun them and save Rainer right there, otherwise he probably would have gotten buttered. 
This is interesting. They're going very heavy on the bottom here. It's kind of a, you know, something you don't usually see often. Hmm. Oh well. So one important thing I should mention relatively early on is when you use Burrow Charge, as you can see, you have a pretty long range on it. You don't have to go the full range. You can basically tap E again to jump out of the charge early. So do keep that in mind. Very important that you pop out at the right time to ensure you're getting that damage on enemy heroes. So I boop, get the damage up. Stuns them both momentarily as well, which is nice. There's that stun. There's that stun. Here comes the charge. Boom! And that's the first blood. Oh, I got my shield up, but they're on me. Oh, I'm leaving New Barack alone. Go, my scarab man. Run. Oh, it's another one. Oh, he's coming for you, Rainer. I'm sorry. You're going to die. Boom! We got him, Illidanger. That's another kill. So for our next talent here, um, I really like Under King, but I also like Legion of Beetles, so it's really a toss up here. I mean, Legion of Beetles is nice just because it gives you those constant beetles, but we are going to go for Under King this game just to lower the cooldown in addition to increasing the range. It gives us a really good escape potential and initiation potential on it. I mean, being able to you know, dive across to everything like that is huge. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, Nova. Nice. Got the kill on her. Um, but yeah, spawning beetles periodically, even if you're not doing a beetle-focused build, is still a really good choice. Just because, you know, that's that's extra soakage on the lane, really. So, that does help out, even with a build that's not focused on it. Man, we are doing a really good job in the mines right now. Kill confirmed. I think the Impale probably has one of the, the most aesthetically pleasing animations out of all the abilities in the game as well. It's just, you know, those spikes look really good, you know? All right, got them to go away. Gotta be really careful here. Need Burrow to get out of here, probably. Now is the hour of my golem's return. He also doesn't do too shabby of a job at Merc Camps because you have those little beetles. So they help a little bit. I mean, you're still not clearing them nearly as fast as, like, say, a Sonya would. Or, um, or even a Diablo, for that matter. But, doing alright job. Between your beetles and your shield, you're able to basically sustain through a lot of the damage, at least so. Having these siege guys, they're gonna go top. That'll help to counter theirs. Tyrande just tossing that out. Oh no, Illidan. Oh, what's going on with my camera? All right, so for here, I really like to go bed of barbs. Um, getting a slow after the stun is a great way to follow up, I feel. Now that being said, uh, even if you go beetle build, I feel that the healing from leeching scarab is just really isn't worth it. You know, it's, it's a very, very low amount of healing. Um, Shed Exoskeleton, however, another really good choice. Having 25% movement speed anytime you shield up can help quite a bit. You know, it really, really gives you some mobility that just adds on top of your, your burrow as well. Yeah, you're dead. You shouldn't have done that. Man, 
we are really doing some work to them right now. Run, Rainer, run! I'm trying to cover for you. Oh no, she sniped him. Oh, look at that burrow, man. You can really, really get hustling to escape with that. Trying to wait to see if they're leaving or if they're staying here. So as I mentioned, we're going to be going Locust Swarm pretty much hands down. That is my ability of choice. <coughs> ah. And Locust Swarm is great. It really actually kind of gives you some like one-on-one -on -one potential. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we're not leaving yet. Might have a fight breaking out any second here. Yep. Illidan is pushing the fight. Go, my locusts! Molest everything! Alright, so we're gonna get out of here. We got no mana. We need mana. We're doing a really good job so far. Don't wanna risk continuing the push without any. It's going really good. This is a really good game, actually. Probably one of my better new Barak games. I've just been really on par with my bro charges here. Nothing like recording some HOTUS on a Saturday afternoon with a nice cold beer. It's a nice day. I mean, it's not really nice outside, but, you know, it's nice to do this. Camps right as they spawn up. So no Those are mine. <laughs> like how he just like walked away. All right, man, they're yours. I'm not gonna mess with you. Damn right you won't. My beetles will sustain me! Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh, I gotta run! Oh, God. Oh, God. Rainer, you can do it, Rainer! Oh, oh my God. Wow. That was huge. Um, so for here, Chitness plating pretty much hands down. Increasing our shield by 40% is huge. That's going to really help us out. Um, out of the other choices, you know, Burning Rage, you don't need it. I feel like Burning Rage is always just a silly talent on tanks. Um, I actually think I might have taken that on my Tyrael build, but... Oh, Tyrael you're hyper-aggressive with. I don't I don't look at Tyrael as a tank, how I do a lot of characters. Um, I play him as more like a, you know, kind of tank-assassin hybrid. Spell shield, not really worth it. Also, you know, I feel we're better off just focusing on the extra strength of our shield, which you can see is pretty significant. Get these guys up. If I can grab a bunch of merc camps, that'll help us out quite a bit. So they might be coming for this, but we can get 
Getting all three Merc camps is gonna help to counter the push that their Golem will be doing. through their golem real fast while we got two siege mercs plus the the bruisers pushing actually i think i'll just help the push ignore the golem pretty much Too many stuns. Just trying to under king out of there. Not under king, but burrow charge. <laughs> Thinking of the talent's name. So that was pretty good, though. We managed to push through that. So we're up to the front line there. We're up to the front line here through the golem. And they still got to get past this keep. And they just barely got through that one. We got a pretty strong field advantage right now. Plus, with all the mercs snatched up, that'll buy us a little bit of time without them being able to grab those. going down. They should have this. This is... So blood for blood right here, hands down. Gives us a nice little amount of burst. And some more healing, of course. Murky. Gotcha, bitch. As long as we maintain like a full level ahead of them, we're in really good shape. So I'm gonna mana up right after I get this, jump into the mines. Be looking good. Do you hear that flattery? I believe they got the level advantage right now. My locust, heal me. Senpai, please. That was a nice cleanup, though. We're looking good.
all this stuff out of the way. Got you with the blood for blood. Locust is up. Oh, she didn't go down. I'll be damned. Oh, yes, she did. Come down, Rainer. This is the GG. We're taking it here. So we probably won't hit level 20. Um, for level 20, two choices here. Actually, three choices. Um, Hard and Shield does help a lot because you don't have a lot of sustain as Nubarak. Um, I really like Hive Master because having that really does give you a good amount of life sustain, which is another thing that you're kind of missing. But with that being said, Rewind is probably the best choice possible here simply because of the fact that with Rewind, I mean, you got two instances to use your shield. You know, you can burrow in and then rewind and then do a secondary burrow. You can drop out stuns and then rewind and drop out more stuns. So, you know, basically doubling your mobility, your shielding, and your CC is huge on a hero like Anubarak. But even then, like I said, all three of them are really good choices. The hardened shield helps your survivability a lot um, in terms of making you tankier in battle, whereas the locust helps your life sustain by just constantly being around and healing. Like, I've actually had the locust pretty much kill Murky all on its own. Uh, but either way, you know, he's he is a really fun warrior, even if he's not as tanky as some of the other ones. Being able to do the burrows and the stuns just makes him a ton of fun to play. So either way, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed a new Barak. Um, obviously, we still have Lost Vikings, and I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be tomorrow. I'm still 200 gold short of them. Um, it's Saturday right now, so with the community goal tomorrow, I could unlock them. Um, with that in mind, I know Sylvanas is supposed to drop next week as well, and personally, I'd rather have my gold ready to buy Sylvanas over Vikings. So I will get those heroes out for you guys when I, I have the time to, you know, farm up the gold and get to them. So if this is the last one for now, I'll miss you all. Make sure to tune into the streams. Of course, we do stream uh, Heroes of the Storm quite a bit, um, sometimes Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays even. We almost always do it Fridays pre-drunk through, so we're getting drunk while we're playing, which is always a ton of fun. So either way, thanks for coming by. I appreciate the viewership, and we will see you guys next time when we do another Hero Showcase.